there beautiful souls, Avalon here and today I would like to talk to you about books and training wheels, primarily taking them off. Now I'm specifically referring to the subject of witchcraft here. Now if you were to approach me personally with the question of where should I begin on my path, I would most definitely say read. Read, 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 and read some more, devour everything that you can get your hands on, make friends with the librarian, borrow books from other people, get into book exchange websites, read blogs, just really go there with amassing a good foundation of literature for yourself. I think books are a wonderful way for us to discern what we like, what we don't like, to get in touch with the language that is very much present, the jargon of witchcraft, and to become a bit more comfortable in speaking about your craft because you have been given the necessary tools to describe certain facets of your craft, thanks to the various authors that are contributing to the very large pool of literature on witchcraft. But then there comes a time where you need to put down those books and start applying what you are reading and critiquing what you are reading and independently thinking about what it is that you have read and how that makes you feel and analyzing things from a very personal and authentic point of view and then utilizing what you find after you do these things in your practice to really nourish your witch's practice and I find that there can be a little bit of friction there because I'm always met with somebody who who is describing a facet of their craft but instead of telling me how it makes them feel, what they've tried, um, where they're at, what they're experimenting with etc etc what I'm met with is book titles and direct quotes from books and I find that really really perplexing to me because I'm the type of individual who I will read something, I will take notes on what I find to be nourishing and valuable and then I will try to apply that in some way to my practice. It will either fit or it will not but the only way that I'm going to know if it does is if I go there and directly apply it and when I do directly apply it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the exact thing that I have read about, the exact uh, practice. It has to fit with my practice and my practice as a witch is very unique as are all of our practices as witches. They're very very unique what I do is not to be found in a book. What I do is the amalgamation of many, many, many life lessons, book lessons, conversations, the whole kit and caboodle. And I apply that to my practice and that's what creates the diversity and that sense of unique within my practice. It's also the great foundation of my practice. I find literature to be uh, incredibly nourishing. But I also find that it's important and rather valuable to remember that books are one author's perspective. And yes, we may resonate with an author's perspective or we may not, but it's still one single person's perspective. And just because it's been printed so many times, it doesn't mean that it has more weight or less weight than one's personal opinion. We are all entitled to our personal opinions. We are all entitled to critique what we read and to really understand at the very core exactly what it is that we are digesting as far as literature goes. It's very healthy to do so and I think that I would love to see a bit more of it because there's not quite enough of it in my sphere of consciousness at the moment and um, and I find that it's, it can be so valuable to take off those training wheels, to stop referring to the books so much, to stop directly copying from the books, to stop, to stop that and to start going at it from a bit of a, a more loose and free uh, perspective because you have the necessary information in your head and you have life experience. When you marry the two together, you've got a great foundation there for an autonomous practice and you can apply that to create such a richly diverse practice as a witch and it's astounding to me that I don't see more people doing it. Now that's not a critique, each to their own, everyone's on their uh, on their path at different stages of course and this is not necessarily something that I would be uh, saying to say a beginner 
um, on the very beginning stages of their practice but it is something that I would be saying to people who want to go well what what now like where can I go because you do hit the book wall many people know the book wall you do hit the book wall where you've read all the magical books that are out there to be read and sure there will be others that creep up from the ethers from time to time that you're going to want to read but then you have to make the switch from from magical and occult to anthropology and history and language and you get to, to the more advanced stage where you have to learn things from a, a human point of view and you have to learn how to integrate that knowledge and you have to learn how to anchor that knowledge in and books on history and anthropology and languages will assist to help you anchor down that information uh, but at the same time another very functional thing that will help you to anchor down that information is practice putting things into practice is taking what it is that you love about each and every book that you read and making it fit your path cutting the corners and, and, and trimming the fat make it fit perfectly into your path and it's a beautiful thing when you can do it it means that you're really really growing from what you're reading and then literature is actually serving a wonderful purpose to assist you to grow in a very practical sense you've taken what you've seen read and you're putting it to direct use and you're figuring out as much in much the same way as a scientist does what works and what doesn't that just the process of elimination because we might be met with such beautiful terminologies and wonderful practices in books that for some reason just feel clumsy in, in our practice and we've tried it we've tried adjusting it we've tried you know holding it up this way looking at it that way twisting it this way analyzing the situation to see what we could do to make it work and sometimes it's just not meant to be you know there's a lack of synergy between you know that that concept and your personal path it might not stay that way forever it might be something that you would like to then revisit later on down the track when you've grown a little bit more and you've tweaked your path a little bit more then maybe there's room for that puzzle piece in there but it's important to put what you've learnt to really, really good use and not just be that book witch. And there's nothing wrong with the book witch. We've all been the book witch. It's an archetype. The book witch is an archetype. We have sat there in the grand chair uh, and, and just devoured books and then been that person that goes, oh, I'm reading this and I learnt this and it's a wonderful space to be in. Educating yourself and allowing that literature to inspire you to the point where you want to talk about it to other people is wonderful. It's exciting. It literally makes me feel like my adrenaline is like, oh. And it's wonderful. It's just full stop wonderful. But then what, what goes beyond that? What goes beyond that is actually taking off those training wheels and applying what you've learned and putting it to use in your practice and figuring out you know, how it fits for you and how it feels to move in those shoes, to, to be moved by an author's words and to see what comes of it. Are your experiences with a certain practice the same as the author's? It might be, it might not be. If they're not, if, if it's not, then how is it different? And this is the stuff to catalog. This is the stuff to journal about. I've read blah, blah, blah's book, Christopher Penzak's uh, Temple of Witchcraft series, for instance, is a great one that people love to read, right? Uh, I have read those books myself. I find Christopher Penzak to be a wealth of information. Uh, but I also find that as a, as a male writer, what I see in male writing is something that was recently pointed out to me, not so recently, but pointed out to me by a friend, and it's all very lists, lists and information and analysis and list. Uh, there lacks a feeling, there's a feeling that's, um, that's missing there. And I'm a very feelings-oriented person. I like to intuit my way through things. I like to be moved by spirit in a way. And so following a, a list in a book is never, ever going to work for me. I know that about myself. And there's got to be other people out there like me that when you look at a book and you look at that information and you're looking at all of those lists and, and the correspondences and things of that nature, that yes, it's valuable information and I would never say that it's not, but it's also not something that can be directly applicable because there is something missing. In many cases, what's missing is your emotion the way that you feel about that information and the way you feel about that information will change its perspective and um, and will enrich the practice as a whole because you're you're caring about what it is that you're devouring from a literature perspective a literary perspective I should say and and it's a beautiful thing 
it's a beautiful thing to um, to get to the point where you're like, I've read all of this stuff now, I'm just going to put it to good use. And you might find that you go through stages as well. Like I'm right now going through a literary stage. I'm going through the book stage. I'm, I'm the book witch right now um, because I'm researching and I'm writing at the same time. So that serves my purpose. I'm there sitting firmly in that archetype. And it's because I'm sitting firmly in that archetype that I recognise that I'm there because I've also been on the other side of it where I'm just like giving the books a bit of a break and going out there in nature and learning directly from from the land around me, having conversations with people, putting everything to practical use, doing ritual over and over again, trying out new sacred spaces, trying out new crystals, new recipes, intuiting things and working with 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 um, with the stars and with the moon in my own personal way, a way that of course I have cultivated through many years of of reading and also many years of doing. So um, one of the, the one of my favourite things to say about witchcraft is that it is a craft. You you must do it. You can read about it until the cows come home, but it's never going to be of true authentic value to you until you start to effectively practice what it is that you're reading and tailor make what you're reading to you personally so that it is your own personal unique path. And that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So it's just something that I wanted to talk about a little bit there is that um, we can get very much caught up in the archetype of book witch and it's nice to be there, I get it. I'm there right now, like I said. But there comes a time where we have to relinquish that control and stop looking so much to other people to get the answers to our questions that we have to adventure, we have to go on the odyssey for ourselves and determine what it is that we need. And I find that when we do that, when we set off like the fool in the tarot as the spirit in search of the experience, then we find exactly what it is that we need. All the lessons are there. They might come in the way of a book handed to us by another person. They might come in the way of an adventure out in nature. They might come through conversation. And, you know, whichever way it, it happens, it's a beautiful thing because we're out there and we're growing and we're trying and we're adapting and we're adjusting and we're crafting.